What's SPI? SPI stands for Serial Peripheral Interface. Hardware engineers will refer to the interface as SPI. SPI was created in the 1980s to address the faster throughput speed over the existing I2C protocol. To gain that throughput speed an additional signal was needed to isolate data to and from the host. SPI devices are found in standalone memory devices like NOR Flash, serial EEPROMs, and secure digital memory cards, liquid crystal displays, A to D and D to a converters, and real-time clocks. This makes SPI a common and widely used serial bus across many applications, including consumer electronics, industrial equipment, automotive, and aerospace. SPI is also referred to as a four-wire bus as there are three bust signals serial clock, or SCK, master out slave in or MOSI, and master in slave out or MISO. But because SPI does not include a slave addressing method in the protocol, a fourth signal chip select or CS is needed to select each slave. Here is an example of three devices connected to the same SPI bus. The microprocessor is the SPI bus master, and the three slaves are an A to D converter, a serial EEPROM, and an LCD. Note that each slave device needs its own CS signal, or IO on the microprocessor. There's a total of six signals versus the two signals in a three-slave I2C system. To configure any SPI device, a clear understanding of the datasheet by the device manufacturer is needed. Here we have taken the EEPROM from Micron as reference to explain the read and write transactions after taking a look at the datasheet the following is the instruction table. Let's take a look at the read protocol. The device is selected by pulling CS low. The 8-bit read instruction is transmitted to the EEPROM followed by the address. After the correct read instruction and address are sent, the data stored in the memory at the selected address is shifted out on the SO pin. The data stored in the memory at the next address can be read sequentially by continuing to provide clock pulses. The read operation is terminated by raising the CS pin. Let's take a look at the write protocol. Prior to any attempt to write data to the EEPROM, the write enable latch must be set by issuing the REN instruction. This is done by setting CS low and then clocking out the proper instruction into the EEPROM. After all, 8 bits of the instruction are transmitted, CS must be brought high to set the write to enable latch. Once the write enable latch is set, the user may proceed by setting CS low, issuing a write instruction, followed by the address, and then the data to be written. Depending upon the density, a page of data that ranges from 16 bytes to 256 bytes can be sent to the device before a write cycle is necessary. The only restriction is that all of the bytes must reside on the same page.